What's up guys, Heking here, bringing you a new video regarding Resident Evil and Capcom's future with it. Just woke up, need that coffee, okay? So, before I get further in, remember to like and subscribe, please. Please like and subscribe, okay? And let's get into it, because this is going to be a very important video, and we only got till June 21st to get this sorted. Alright guys, so Capcom has released the new survey uh, after Resident Evil 4 Remake's release, which is asking fans, you know, what they want next, what they want remade next. Obviously you have to answer some questions like what Resident Evil games have you played, you know, what products do you first like, movies, games, etc, etc, and then you ask a bunch of questions like the, uh, how many of the films have you watched, how many of the games have you played, etc, etc. And then it asks you all about the uh, online service stuff, like Portal or uh, Resident Evil .net, which I don't use, the Ambassador program, etc, etc. And then the last questions are basically what remake, or what would you like to see remake next? Like, you know, what next Resident Evil remake do you want next? So, this is very important. You know, some people are going to think that Capcom doesn't look at these surveys. They do. I know for a fact they do, because a lot of the ideas I remember suggesting for Resident Evil 4 remake ended up happening in the remake. So, I'm not saying that I'm to thank for a lot of the stuff that happened, okay? I like to think that there's a lot of people like me who had the same ideas, right? But the point is, like, Capcom, I like to think, does look at these things and... Oh, just a second. Why did I have my alarm on for 12, for 12, for 12 in the afternoon? But, uh, yeah... Uh, Capcom does look at these things, they look at these, and I like to think they get ideas from it. I think they do get ideas, they like to see what fans have to say. But uh, at the same time, obviously, this is just a question asking, what do you want to see remade first? And usually when, when I write the surveys, I, I obviously list what I want to see next, but also what I want to see in it and what they could change and improve, etc, etc. So right now, this is your chance, your opportunity to basically sit there and write in that you want to see Cold Veronica next. I know a lot of people are going to be like, we don't want Cold Veronica, we want RE5 Remake. It's very weird, you know, you've got different forums and you've got the, you've got fan bases saying they want RE5 Remake next and then you've got the other fan base saying they want Cold Veronica with a bunch of others pretty much saying they want to see like the Outbreak Games Remake. You can say all of them, okay? I'm not saying you should just say one, no. Say all of them, obviously. But uh, the point I'm trying to say is that I think it's more important we get a Cold Veronica Remake next before we get re5 okay we'll get re5 i want an re5 remake as well but i want to see cold veronica first that said i wouldn't mind seeing a remake of resident evil 1 again or even resident evil 0 or, or a combination of the two which is why i'm gonna make this video now so yeah i'm gonna post the link to the survey down below in the chat or maybe even up here if i can write it in and obviously go to it and fill her out and do it and just go into detail about what you want i mean the, the re games i would personally suggest remaking or reimagining with the re engine would be would be re1 and trying to sort of make it a bigger bigger game and expand on it and expand more on the lore that's been revealed in re7 8 and what we found out in re remake 2 and 3 and put all of that in there you know make the story and the lore more tight now basically and fix any issues or loose ends that the series has that we never got in the original timeline because this is a new timeline i think that a lot of people don't realize with these remakes is this is a new timeline essentially uh people are gonna say no it's just its own thing it's doing it's you know it's, it's oh it's still in the same continuity not really no this is this is a new timeline okay and it, and it feels like capcom are trying to fix a lot of the issues for example you don't get the agency mentioned in the re2 remake and then, uh, for example, we don't find out, you know, Nikolai is doing a whole different thing now compared to his original game's counterpart. Barry doesn't save Jill and Carlos now. Uh, a nemesis was potentially created by Louis Serra and his European team. And it was uh, the prototype for Lost Blogger. It was Umbrella's version of the Lost Bloggers now from what Capcom have said in their little... Uh, history law for for this game so there's a lot of differences there's a lot of differences and it's clearly capcom sort of to sit, sitting down and trying to tie everything together now to make it have more sense so and like especially with krauser now being leon's mentor instead of a uh, comrade and you know operation heavier having a different continuity compared to the original canon that we had so things are different people are going to deny this but no this is this is a new sort of timeline i think at this point the only canon things that have occurred in this timeline obviously are like the events of the revelations games 
and uh, anything from RE5 and RE6 don't, could still technically change if they wanted to in this new timeline in terms of the remakes. And obviously, I guess different versions of Umbrella, you know, the fall of Umbrella, and obviously we now know there's a different continuity with Operation Heavy Air. And obviously RE7 and 8 are 100%, you know, they happen. They happen right off that these games do. So those are still, those are still 100% canon. Along with the CGI movies, especially since uh, the new CGI film Death Island is a literal sequel to Vendetta, so that's that's still all canon. Um, but the point is that these remakes are now an attempt to sort of fix a lot of the issues that the series had. You know, like like there was all these little things that the series never dwelled into. Like like RE4 introduced the organization, and it never went into them. Like oh, the organization. Okay, who are they? Don't know. Um, and they don't they don't show up in the remake. They could show up in the separate ways, but uh, I think I think what's happened is they pretty much just spelled it out that Ada is a mercenary. End of story. And that she was potentially working for Wesker during, which we know she did because in Umbrella Chronicles we find out that she did in fact work for Wesker during the events of RE2. And then now Nikolai, for example, in RE3, I think with what we find out in RE4 somewhat, it could be hinted at maybe that he was working for Wesker as well, like to wipe out Umbrella from the inside and gather the data, etc, etc. So yeah, there's a lot of things there. Um, but yeah, like I said, like these are, these are things that even RE5, for example, could fix. Like, for example, RE5 could dwell more into setting up uh, the Wesker children better. We can get a bit more development on Spencer as well, uh, etc, etc. Things like that. But yeah, what what games personally would I want to see remade? RE1 remake and RE0, I would say, remake them but combine them. So give us this ultimate raccoon forest experience. You've got uh, you know, you've got the training facility and you've got the match. Combine that. Give us more interaction with the Bravo team. Like uh, there was a fan version of RE1 being made, which would have started in the RPD station, and you get to interact with the various uh, characters before the accident happens. Do that. Have us start there. Have us interact with the stars members. Maybe meet some other characters like Kevin from Outbreak, for example. And then we go to Raccoon Forest, and we get to explore Raccoon Forest. We get to explore the crash site. We get to explore Bravo team's helicopter crash, find Kevin's body, etc., etc. And then we get chased into the mansion. And then from there, it's just this big, massive environment that's, that has a lot of the familiar areas, but now it's expanded to include all the areas from RE0, for example. Um, let us be able to, you know, like, let us be able to interact with the Bravo team members. When we find them, don't have them just be dead, uh, you know, silenced, uh, gone. Have them, have them still be alive and about to go, and then we get to interact with them before their final moments. Maybe we even find, uh, you know, uh, camera footage similar to how we found camera footage with Kenneth now we get to find out with all the other Bravo team members that we encounter like Forrest and we get to see what happened to him when the close attacked we get to find the Rico's and we take that and when we later watch it we can see Wesker or someone look similar to to so wearing a star's uniform in the background you know shooting at him things like that uh, finding notes on them and reading that and getting some expansion on their characters stuff like that would be very nice to have because this way you develop the characters a bit more before their fall uh, having James Marcus be the main villain, actually integrating him into the RE1 story and having him be there pulling all the strings while, you know, Wesker's like keeping his little thing hidden and trying to make, not try not to alert anyone that he's a double agent. Having the leeches in there, actually having the leeches in the mansion. We, we find out that Marcus was the one who spilled the T-virus in the Spencer mansion. How? We never find out or get a direct answer how that happened. Like, let us actually see him doing that. Let us see him attack the Spencer Mansion and releasing the T-Virus. Um, Crimson Heads, you know, bring obviously bring them back, but have them mutate into liquors now if you don't deal with them. And this way we get that whole evolution zombie to Crimson Head to liquor now. So that would be kind of cool to see. Have Lisa Trevor be a stalkish enemy stalking you throughout the entire Spencer Mansion now. Uh, instead of just like these specific caves and that, like once you meet her, she's just there. She's like Mr. X and she's just stalking you and trying to get to you. And you can sort of slow her down in that, but she's just going to keep getting back up and keep chasing you in certain moments in the game. So do that. Uh, you've got a cabin. You've got Lisa's cabin in the in, in the in like the like wood section part of the game. Maybe turn that into the new, uh, uh, you know, cabin fight segment where you and Wesco or someone or a bunch of other stars get trapped in make the cabin bigger and you have zombies or hunters attacking it trying to get in and you have to fight them off so give us a little action moment there there's a lot of things you can do and expand on it Brad you can expand on Brad for example now like like maybe have him be more in the game maybe have us communicate with him etc etc and then there's also the potential for 
DLC like or even bonus submissions with Wesker for example let's recreate reimagine the entire uh, Wesker storylines from uh, Umbrella Chronicles let us see him interacting with Birkin and uh, meeting Sergei Vladimir for example and hinting at Umbrella you know the Umbrella Chronicles chapter fall of Umbrella on Umbrella's end uh, have have us give us a chapter where Wesker awakens after his death and he resurrects and then we get to play as him with his new powers escaping the mansion and fighting Lisa Trevor one final time, or maybe James Marcus comes back and we fight James Marcus instead and you know West you know Wesker finishes him off this time something like that things like that there's a lot you can change and reimagine it doesn't have to be completely 100 percent yeah the camera show off so as I was saying you don't have to completely keep. 100% faithful to the original like I, I do want to see a reimagining like I said that combines a uh, zero and one together in a big massive way uh, and yeah like other examples I'm trying to think what other examples could you do with this like when you find files for example have more files of Spencer talking about the uh, Wesker children project obviously don't call it directly by name maybe refer to it as WC etc etc and obviously the fans who who've played RE5 uh, or Lost in Nightmares, they know what it's referring to, so we know that, we get a bit more information there. Maybe maybe some diaries with Spencer uh, talking about Miranda and, and you know, give us some, some, some hint setups to Resident Evil uh, 8. Uh, maybe even uh, talking about, uh, just getting files from other scientists talking about the other projects like, oh yeah, you know, Birkin's G-Virus, or you know the uh, the European team is working on this uh, parasite that, that's it's, that's you know that's got them inspired by a parasite from this uh, uh, Spanish village. You know, hinting at you know things like that, going more into the history and development of some of the uh, uh, creations and bioweapons in the series. Like I think that stuff would help and tighten up the lore so much more. Hinting at Ada a bit more instead of just the password now. Like and revealing that yeah she was there, she was there during the Spencer incident maybe, or she she visited at one point. So getting stuff like that, that would be really cool to see. So I, w I would like it if they did it like that, if they expanded RE1, reimagined it like that, included elements like that, that would be really cool. Um, like I said, have Brad there and have him interact with the other characters now a bit more with the radio and that. So there's a lot you can do, a lot you can make. And obviously the biggest one would be to have an ending uh, where, where Rebecca, for example, is in Jill's campaign and she escapes alongside Jill, Barry and Chris now. And then have have Barry in Chris's campaign. So give us these little moments where these characters do appear now, and we we get this entire intercrossing storyline. And it's not just oh yeah, these three characters and these three characters escape. No, we get we get an ending where we see all characters escaping in all ways and playing certain roles now. So that would be really good to see. But that's my idea for a Resident Evil One slash Zero sort of a remake reimagining. Uh, Resident Evil Cold Veronica like. Yeah, that would need that that wouldn't need to be co changed completely, but it should just be expanded on. Obviously, a lot of the backtracking should be changed. If there's one thing that game suffers from, it's it's a lot of backtracking. I think uh, slow it down a bit. Uh, in terms of the uh, storylines involving uh, Alfred and his cross-dressing tendency. The best way to fix that is to basically have Alexia still play a big role even though she's cryogenically frozen. Since they're twins, go into that whole uh, twin psychic link thing that sometimes people talk about and actually have Alexia using her abilities to psychic link with Alfred while she's chronologically frozen and take over his body. And that explains why he dresses up as, as Alexia because it is Alexia herself like doing that. And that way, you've got her there in the in, in the entire Claire portion as well, alongside Alfred. So he's not just going crazy; like it is Alexia doing that to him, and getting actually interacting and talking with him. And you know, it gets to that point where it's like, okay, things are getting a bit serious. Wake me up now! I think it's time. So yeah, we could they could do that. They could do it like that, and it would work so much better. Obviously, give us a Wesker boss battle like with Chris, maybe even Claire if they wanted to. I think that would be pretty neat. Um, go into depth, actually explain that and reveal maybe in a file that you find on the island or, or Antarctica from Wesker that reveals that, yeah, Ada was working for him and so was Nikolai. Maybe mention the setbacks that I like. Well, I lost Nikolai Raccoon City, confirming that, yeah, he's dead. He 100% perished in the, in, in the, in the, um, what is it, the, uh, nuclear explosion in Raccoon City. Uh, reveal that Ada did in fact get him the G-Virus. Stuff like that to hint at his build-up of, uh, and his plans. 
actually set him up a bit more in terms of what he wants to do in re1 and cold veronica like ha have wesker mentioned that yeah he wants to do this entire crazy plan because in our in re1 and cold veronica and on brother chronicles you and even re4 you don't get these in the original re4 you don't get these hints that that's what wesker's plan is but in the remake for re4 he literally says that he want he wants to he wants to do that he wants to wipe out billions so you know that one single person or individuals can thrive so he's al he's already mad hungry on on the whole exterminating the world and saving it in his own way with ouroboros so that's already in there uh, so hint at that actually set that up and uh, maybe even find a file from wesker where he mentions jake's mom like oh there was this moment where i was considering leaving and that like but no i i need to do this etc etc maybe maybe something happens maybe you can change jake's origin a bit maybe and maybe reveal give a bit more depth of humanity the west guy maybe reveal that no he did love this person but something happened and it completely broke him maybe perhaps and that's why he's so helping uh it, it, it'll be a bit more different in terms of how they basically just made him into sephiroth in, in rari 5 but that's what i mean build up to that set that up build up properly don't just let it come out of nowhere like build it up with his character in in, a, in an Ari one remake and a Veronica remake so it's set up much better so that when we, by the time we get to re5 remake it's not just going to come out of nowhere it's like oh yeah this he's he's crazy like he's he, this was his plan from the very very beginning um and uh, i'm trying to think what else can they do like uh hank and nikolai we know from the original archives back in the day all those years ago that they used to be rivals maybe find more files where they actually expand on that where they talk about how their rivals and that they were training together on rockford that would be kind of a nice little detail there to have uh expand on wesker's uh hcf is it or hive capture force uh whatever they're called and expand on that maybe even reveal that yeah he's working with tricer at this point in time like the organization that he sold his soul to is is tricer like it is tricer he's working with tricer at this point in time so it's not the organization or the agency it is tricer uh so he's already working with them from behind the scenes but we don't know it's tricer we just get these little hints perhaps uh like tc T or something to you know I mean like to hint at it so again more build up to the future of of the other games and that you can do so much more with that lore now like it would it would work so much better and including james marcus in the lore as well because uh, the original call veronica introduces spencer and edwards ashford but they don't mention james marcus because at that point he, his character hadn't been created yet so now you could fix that and actually include him in there maybe even find files from edwards ashford himself talking about you know marcus's death and his dealings with spencer and then his death and going into detail about that so there's a lot of things they can do to expand on the lore and make call veronica into a better game story-wise or lore wise if you will otherwise uh, the majority of this stuff in the game should be kept uh, in terms of environments, the only thing I would cut from the game is the Moth Corridor. Get rid of the Moth Corridor. Get rid of that crap. Like, get rid of it. That doesn't need to be in there. Uh, obviously, again, being able to upgrade weapons, because I think that's always fun. So, like, make a workbench. Do what Revelations 2 did and have workbenches in, in, in Rockford Island and Antarctica, which, which you can go to and you can, you know, interact with and upgrade your weapons. So, that would be kind of cool to see. Um yeah that's really that's really all the things i could really ask for for a call veronica remake like i would really love it i would really love it and i would really love it if they just do these little changes and just make it grander and bigger and better um which leads us to what other remakes they could do which is basically resident evil 5 remake which i think at this point is a certain it is going to happen but it's just a question of is it going to be the next remake or is capcom going to take their sweet time and do these other remakes first because i feel like a trilogy of this would work better like you'd get that chris versus wesker trilogy with wari one cold veronica and then re5 and then boom you've got that whole storyline there reimagined and it would work so much better uh, in terms of other remakes i wouldn't mind seeing reimagined versions of outbreak one and two um that would that fit into the canon of the reimagined versions of re2 and 3 and whatever uh, you know, uh, reimagined remake game we get next, like RE1 and RE0. So you could you could expand on stuff like that. Obviously, like in, in the uh, new timeline that we have with the remake timeline, Marvin, for example, gets bitten by Brad. You know, when you do that RPD chapter segment, have Marvin there, have him mention Brad getting attacked, etc., etc., by Brad. Uh, you could do so much changes with that now as well. Like, there's so many things you could add to sort of lead into the events that we see in the remakes now. 
uh, expand on the on the hive lab for example a bit more like or both hive labs if you will like again oh may, may, maybe maybe do a clock tower campaign for for one of the outbreak games we didn't get the clock tower in re3 may, make it make it into its own big scenario in an outbreak game that would be different that would be kind of cool to see um hell maybe and this is just a big if maybe we could sit we, 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 when we do the surveys you could ask capcom for director's cuts of re2 remake and re3 remake so for re2 remake just tell them hey give us proper versions of scenario b where you know where and annette's death makes a lot more sense in the different scenarios otherwise it's just the story doesn't really connect when she's got two different deaths in one storyline so fix that issue perhaps you know so the story flows a bit better um and then with RE3 Remake, obviously just say like, yeah, the areas you can't put them back in the game. Maybe have us play as Carlos now. So when, when Joe gets infected and Carlos arrives, you know, get, have him have him go through the clock tower. Like, like he had to, to get to the hospital, he has to go through the clock tower now. And he has to solve all these weird puzzles. And we get, this, we get all this lore there. And he has to get through that in order to get Joe to safety. So now you, you could do it like that. And at the end, he fights the Gravedigger. Boom, there there you go. Like, that could be... I'm, I'm surprised that wasn't a DLC mission. Like, it, it, that could have worked so well. And for whatever reason, they just didn't do it. It's like, it's staring you in the face. Like, that could have been a DLC mission. But nope, we're just we're just not going to do that. It's like, it's like what? Like, so yeah, you could ask for that, maybe. Maybe maybe Capcom would consider it. I mean, we've gotten director's cuts for other games before. But mostly those are like, yeah, we'll just DLC in that. But maybe they would sit back and be like... All right, let's let's fix this. We can resell these games again with improvements. They could, they might do it. They might. You never know. They might. Like uh, Capcom loves money, so why not, right? All right. So yeah, uh, what other remakes could they do? We've, we've discussed RE One, Call Veronica, Outbreak, uh, Director's Cards for Two and Three again. Uh, maybe ask for like uh, a, a HD collection of the original RE1, 2, and 3 from, from the PS1 era. Let us actually get those games again and be able to play them and actually have, you know, slightly updated graphics and trophies, maybe, for example, and achievements. So, yeah, ask for that, perhaps. Like, maybe they'll even consider doing that. Like, we get the original three games and we can actually play them on the consoles properly now, physically or digitally. Like, I would like to have new physical editions of those games because it's practically impossible to play those now like you, you either have to download them for the psn from like i don't know back on the ps4 or ps3 like you can't get it on any current consoles now so i think it's about time capcom sits down and actually like yeah let's re-release these and so people can experience the classics again so that would be kind of cool to see so sort of like what konami is doing with the uh, metal gear solid master collection like literally call it that the uh, resident evil master collection there you go like and maybe they can put in like, port other games as well, like uh, Resident Evil Survivor. Uh, Survivor Two. It's not. It doesn't have a story mode, so I don't know if you would you would want to count that. Um, I would say maybe Dead Aim because that's one of the ones I never played as well. So do it Dead Aim perhaps. So that would be kind of cool and unique to see perhaps maybe. Uh, again, things to consider. Um, other remakes. Again, we're talking about remakes for Resident Evil. Um, Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles. I would not mind seeing reimagined versions of Umbrella's End, where you know instead of just playing as Jill and Chris going to Russia to fight uh, Sergei Vladimir, and then later on playing as Wesker and fighting Sergei, let us actually have other characters there as well, like bring back Carlos, for example, and so we can see what he was up to. Like he actually did join forces with 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 Chris and Jill and help them out during that time period. Um, have Barry there perhaps as well, like have Barry involved, have Barry helping out, right? But basically bring all the characters back, Metal Gear Solid's full style, but have them all play distinct roles, like like Rebecca is the healer, Barry is the weapon, you know, upgrade or expert, uh, Carlos is like, yeah, he's like the marksman, if you will, like with Chris, do stuff like that, you can do, you can do a whole game on Umbrella's End, if you just make it bigger and grander instead of keeping it simple, and again, yeah, you could reimagine that and tie it into Wesker, you know, taking control, get you know, basically helping to shut down Umbrella from behind the scenes, and then getting control of their assets, leading into the events of Resident Evil 4 for, for, for crying out loud, and and obviously maybe even have Ada there, and she's working behind the scenes. You could do so many things with that, like it would work so well. And then of course, uh, uh, and obviously this won't be first person. I would want it to be a proper third person shooter game, all with the shoulder camera, reimagined, but like. Like a whole new reimagined storyline, not just Chris, Joe, and Wesker. Like having most of the other characters there, and we get like a 
conclusion on them. Like, we get, like, a little tagline that says, yeah, Carlos went and lived his life, etc., etc. And then all the other characters, we know what happened to them. We know that Barry would come back in Revelations 2, etc., etc. Uh, maybe have maybe end Umbrella's End on where it sets up the BSA, uh, uh, for example. Like, maybe there's some of the original founders, because we know there's 11 founders. And we know three of them were Chris Jill and uh, Clive O'Brien from Revelations 1. So maybe maybe go into a bit more depth and reveal that uh, some of the people who actually came to end Umbrella were the original BSA founders, for example. Maybe Carlos went and formed the uh, South American branch of the BSA. and that. Like, You could do things like that and that would work so, so well. And then, uh, obviously, a third-person remake of Operation Heavy are starring Krauser. Like, like, we already know the continuity is different with the RE4 remake. So let us see that. Let us see those events from his POV. Let us see him losing his men and wanting revenge and wanting that power now, like, and seeking out uh, Los Illuminados and that, and going there and helping them and that. So that would be grand and different as well. So there you go. That's two other remakes you could do. Like, there's so much. I know people are going to say, oh, we want new games. We're going to get, I think we'll get new games. But in a, in a way, these are new as well because they're, they would be familiar and yet different as well. So, like, you can't just say we're not getting new games. I mean, how many people have actually played Cold Veronica, for example? Not a lot. It's, it's a game that has such a big impact on the story and it deserves to be felt and played that people should know more about it for. Same with the Outbreak games. That I feel like that didn't get a lot of chance. And because it was like the first sort of multiplayer RE games, and since Capcom loves multiplayer games, remake those, make them better, make them play better, and then obviously have the single player there and the multiplayer aspect uh, with the co-op and that, and boom, there you go. Like, everyone enjoys it. Everyone can play it and enjoy it for what it is. Like, yeah, like... <laughs> Uh, it's it's staring you in the face just do that like it works again again it would work so well doing that so yeah you got re1 you got co veronica you got re5 uh outbreak one and two and then you've got uh umbrella z that's seven games you could essentially do um re5 remake what would you change with that essentially the only thing i would want to do with that is like i said keep it more into what uh the other games reveal and build up on that and obviously set up uh, the Wesker children, set up Alex Wesker as well maybe, have a mention in, in an RE1 remake. Since we know Wesker and her met during, in re some at some point before Revelation soon, some point before Wesker's death, maybe mention that in a file in, in, uh, in Cold Veronica for example, like oh yeah he did meet his sister, like you know set that up, there's so many things you can do with that. Have more Jill, I think that's the biggest complaint about the original RE5, that Jill is just sort of sidelined. Have Jill be in the main game. Like, integrate Lost in Nightmares into the main story. Don't have it just be a DLC. Have that actually be a flashback that you go to and you play it. And have Spencer there, like, taunting you and, and doing these little things behind the scenes before you encounter him. And then Wesker finishes him off. Uh, have Jill join Chris and Sheva, perhaps. And then, or better yet, just switch up. Like, after you save Jill's life, have Josh come in and, hit, and him and Sheva go and do what they do. And have Jill and Chris go after Wesker. And then we actually get that proper showdown with Chris and Jill taking out Wesker. Because that's what the... But that's what it should have been. That's what it was leading up to. And it wasn't. It's like, no. It should have been Chris and Jill fighting and finishing on Wesker. Not Sheva. Like, not this new random character that just comes in there. Because Sheva, for, for all of you know, she was only added in as a co-op character player last minute. Because of all the crap regarding the racism and that. That's it. Like, originally, she was an NPC. She wasn't supposed to have, like, a big, massive main player two character role. Like, that was just her added in because of that. Like, like have Capcom needs to ignore this stuff. They just need to do their game. Forget what people say and cry about. Like, the people who cry about that stuff are, in my opinion, racist themselves. Like, if you're going to see, if you're going to see stuff like that and then say, oh, that's, that, that's your problem. It's not us. Like, we as fans, we know what the deal was back then when this game was first revealed. Like, we know it's Africa. We know why it's happening there. We know why the story's going there. Like, and then it got ruined because of one or two people online crying about it. Like, no, we need to leave this whole Twitter rage behind. Like, we, 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 we can't have that. So just, just make a proper remake of 5 and make it scary and make it intense like RE4 remake and make it better, like, and make the story better, and have Jill play more of a role, and make Sheva's character a bit more better as well, and have her be there with Josh and that, like, develop that relationship a bit more, like, that brother and sister relationship, go more into depth in it, like, again, so much more you can do to improve it, and then, of course, the Revelations games, would you want to remake those? 
I would say yes and no. Like, I would keep those games the same. But I would just update them. Like, like make high-budget versions of those games. Because they do... They are low-budget games. I mean, the first one was a 3DS title. And the other one was, like, this very low-budget console title. That was released digitally first before it, it went into, like, a physical. So, re 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 like, remake those. But make them high-budget. But keep everything the same, essentially. Like, maybe add some improvements to the combat. But, obviously, I would say story and everything should be the same. Maybe even use the same voice lines and audio and that. But, like, yeah, like... It's not really a big deal, I think. Like, I think that, I think they're fine overall. But if if you had to remake them, that's how I would do it. I wouldn't really add anything to them because I think I think they're fine as they are. Uh, the biggest overhaul would need to be Resident Evil Six, and yeah, I I <sighs> Resident Evil Six, man. I like Resident Evil Six, I do, but it it has so many problems. I I don't know where you would begin. I think Chris's campaign is the best one. And I think uh, character-wise, uh, uh, Jake and Sherry are great, and their theme is very great. But Leon and Helena's and Ada's really suffers. Like, there's a lot of repetitiveness to them, and the boss fights aren't as great as they could be, especially with Simmons. And I don't like the whole Carla angle. I liked where it was going with the revelation that Ada might have been this uh, person tested on and turned into this BOW. Or maybe she was a BOW from the start. Uh, and then they kind of ruined it with the whole Carla, Carla uh, double ganger clone thing. I never really liked that. So I honestly, I would cut that out. And I would just focus it on Ada being this bad guy, being blackmailed, being manipulated by Simmons. But, but, then Le but then Leon saves her and then she, you know, helps Leon defeat Simmons. And he, you make him the big grand bad guy. And then have Chaos or Chaos, whatever that giant monster is, still be part of the main game then. Obviously have Ustanek as well, like... There's elements I love about it, and then there's elements I don't like. Like honestly, I would just sort of simplify it a bit more, and obviously give us a segment where Chris and Leon actually work together. Like we see them work together, and fighting together. Like give us a final boss fight, which is just Chris and Leon teaming up, and all the characters teaming up, like just to make it f like. So as I was saying, yeah, like uh, do what Return of the King did, uh, the video game, and when it inter when, when the campaigns intersect, it's just this big uh, final chapter where all the characters are there and they're fighting together and they're fighting the final bosses. And yeah, just do that with Resident Evil 6, like, like have all the main characters there, like, and you get to pick whichever you want and you play through it, and uh, yeah, like, that would be really great, I think, that would be really sweet, like, sort of like a Final Fantasy, a Final Boss fight as well, like, where all the characters are there and they're playing their part in defeating it, I would like to see that, that's what I would like to see more, uh, just a tighter RE6, I do like the controls, I think, uh, but it just needs to be a bit more smoother and I think a bit more faster. Because in the end of the day, it is an action game. So so keep that focus there, making it into an action game. But if you want to make it survival horror, then you've got to you gotta make it survival horror. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you have to really sit down and look at the campaigns, individual campaigns, and think about how am I going to change this? How am I going to make this? Et cetera, et cetera. So obviously, with, 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 if you're going to make Leon's campaign full on survival horror, more puzzles, of course, more exploration, maybe actually turn the university into an actual environment that, that you get to explore and then you find secret passages and then you go from there into the sewers and then you end up in the church maybe or I get they were trying to do this whole Raccoon City RE2 style vibe. Okay, I guess you could still keep that, but I don't know, like expand more on it, like... Um, like sort of like basically just make it a, a, a whole big campaign like like the first the first segment is is the is basically the university which is which would be like the village and in the second segment you know like the castle would be tall or tall oaks uh slash i don't know maybe, maybe oh okay maybe tall oaks and the university could be the village area and then and then the entire castle on the ground lab is is the is the castle segment and then obviously the China segments are the island segments. You get to China, you do the whole plane stuff, and then you're exploring, you're going through, and then you get the whole ending seven with the gas and that, and boom, there you go. And then with Chris, you just sort of do the same thing. You just pick certain environments, and you go for that, Eastern Europe, and then China, and then the entire oil rig, and that, do you know what I mean? Like, do it like that, like split up into proper big segments, but it would have to be a pretty big, really big game, because essentially what you're doing is you're doing like, multiple different environments and campaigns for multiple characters so yeah like that that's that that's big but like i would like that if they did it like that if they expanded it on it like that but yeah uh overall that's really all i can say about re6 there isn't there's, there isn't a whole lot i can say about it but yeah uh remakes like capcom's asking for it 
I, I do think I do think at this point uh, that Resident Evil Separate Ways DLC, or even as its own game, is going to come out in 2024. And then I think in 2024 we are going to have Resident Evil 9 revealed, and that's going to come out in 2025. After that, what happens? I don't know, uh, because it, it feels like these games take, like these remakes as well, they take like four years to make. We had we had RE2 remake in 2019, and then we had RE4 remake in 2023. There was a four-year gap. Yeah, there was RE3 remake, but that was more of a DLC, and I feel like that's basically what Separate Ways is going to be as well. Like that's going to be that's going to be the Separate Ways is essentially going to be the RE3 remake for next year. I think that's what it's going to be. Like, I'm sure of that, I think. I'm positive about that. Especially if the rumors are true that M2 is working on it. Because since they have the experience making these big, short action campaign with RE3 Remake, they can do it with separate ways now. So I think that's what's going to happen. And then, yeah, like, uh, is there anything going to come out in 2026? I don't know. I mean, it's the, it's the anniversary of Resident Evil 1. That's the thing. That would be a best time to release an RE1 remake again. I mean, you've got the stuff there. Just take RE1, take RE0 and, and combine it. But I imagine it would be a lot of hard work. So, again, four-year period, guys. So, four years for that and four years. It, re it really depends how they want to look at these games. Like, which ones do they want to build up? And then which ones do they want to make a quick buck out of? And I, and I feel I feel like because we already have remakes of RE1, they would sort of look at RE1 and be like, okay, we'll do that in an RE engine, but it's going to be a quick thing, similar to RE4 remake, but, but a tad bit better. Say with Veronica, and an RE5 remake would be the game that they would completely focus on making grand and big. So I could see that potentially coming out in what four, five, six. That would be the that would be the game that comes out in uh, 2027 if that's the game they really want to big up on that. Whereas with Remake 1 and Coronica, I could see those sort of being like the very smaller games that get rushed, which I wouldn't want, but it's Capcom. Like I'm I'm hoping they learned their lesson with RE3 Remake uh, and they wouldn't do that again, but I don't know. I don't know like uh it's, it's Capcom. They like to surprise us in good and bad ways. <laughs> but yeah, that's my video, guys. That's my video um, for this. Uh, I mean, what other remakes could I suggest? Like, I mean, I guess if you're a fan of Survivor and you want it, but I don't really care about Survivor. I don't really care about Dead Aim. It's, mo it's mostly those games I would want to see remade. I guess you could ask for a Dino Crisis remake. I mean, if you, I mean, I would love that. I mean, I did. I did the survey and I did ask remake Dino Crisis One and Two and give us a proper third game. I ignore Dino Crisis Three. Give us a proper Dino Crisis like sequel to One and Two with Dylan and Regina. Like, I would like to see that. Like, remake One and Two, and then we get we get Dino Crisis Three with with Dylan and Regina returning. Like, that's what I would love to see. A proper trilogy, like beginning, middle, and end. Like done properly like that 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 was my favorite capcom game those were my two favorite capcom games back in the day before i got fully invested into resident evil like you know a lot of people it was resident evil for me it was dino crisis and not a day goes by that i don't feel sad that we didn't get a proper continuity. i remember i remember playing dino crisis 3 and then i was like what is this like i was enjoying it don't get me wrong for what it was but i i kept playing it thinking that at the end there would be some big revelation and answer and there wasn't and I was so disappointed. I was like, wow, nothing really. This doesn't really connect with, with Dino Crisis 1 and 2 at all. So, but yeah, maybe ask for that. Like, get Capcom to realize, hey, we want a Dino Crisis remake. Do that. Yeah, I would say that. Do it. Dino Crisis remake 1 and 2. And then a proper third game. Okay? Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> That's what I would say. Anyway, guys, that's my video. I hope you liked it. Again, remember, go down below. Go on the click. You've got till the 21st of June to fill out the survey. Do it. Ask Capcom what you want. Do it in a professional way. Write up what you want changed or what you want added. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, ask for a Cold Veronica remake. Ask for that like before RE5. Obviously, ask for an RE5 remake, but say... Give us Cold Veronica Remake first before RE5. And then obviously if you want RE1, do that. If you want Outbreak, do it. And obviously, just as a bonus, mention Dino Crisis 1 and 2. Okay, let them know we want those remade. And let them know we want a proper third game to wrap up that storyline. Uh, because God, it deserves it. It deserves it, okay? Maybe even ask for a Devil May Cry Remake. <laughs> 
I didn't even think about that. Maybe ask for that as well. That would be kind of cool. But yeah, like, just do it, guys. Do what you do. Just, just, yeah, just fill out the survey and ask whatever you want from them remake-wise uh, in any game. Not just RE. Just be like, I think there's even uh, Omni Moshumi or whatever it's called. Ask for that if you want. Uh, Hunting Ground, perhaps. There's so many things you could ask for, but I, I, I guess this, I guess this survey is mainly reg uh, regarding RE games, though. But I, I guess it wouldn't hurt if you just maybe list one or two other remakes from different franchises in Capcom that you would like. It, it doesn't hurt. It, it could work. They could look at this and be like, okay, a lot of fans have demand for it. Let's do it. Get, get it out. Get this news out. Get people to what you know do this link again. You got till the twenty first. Let our voices be heard. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. All right, guys. That's my video. That's the end. Like and subscribe, please. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and...